five, horizontal circular motion and conical pendulum. Centripetal force and centripetal acceleration. An object moving in a circle is always changing direction. And so its velocity is always changing because velocity has direction. Since there is a change in velocity, there must be acceleration. And this type of acceleration is called centripetal acceleration. And since there is acceleration, there must be force called centripetal force, F equal to MA. Both the acceleration and the force are directed towards the center of the circle, as shown here by these two arrows towards the center. The formula for acceleration is AC, which stands for centripetal acceleration, equal to V squared over R. Here is a worked example to show you how you can use this formula properly and also how you work out the distance. Now we come to a different type of circular motion called conical pendulum where a mass is at the end of a string and doing circular motion like this forming a cone shape. The force applied by the string on the object is called a tension force or just a tension. And the tension force, looking at this diagram here, can be resolved into two components, vertical and horizontal. Vertical one counterbalances the weight of the object. The horizontal one provides a centripetal force that keeps the object in circular motion. And by looking at this right angle triangle here, and this angle here being theta, same as that, corresponding angles, you can work out this component, and that component was just simply this side here. So the horizontal component is at sin theta, vertical is at cos theta. Here is a worked example on conical pendulum, and you'll notice that you only need these two pieces of information, you don't need that, and you can work out a tension force in the string. So far we've been looking at horizontal circular motion, now we're looking at vertical circular motion. And these are two real life examples. One is roller coasters going doing the circular motion. The other one is the warplane doing loop to loop. Vertical circular motion continue. Look at this diagram here. This object doing this vertical circular motion. We just look at two important positions, top and bottom. And look at bottom first. When the object is here, there are two forces acting on it. One is its own weight, adding down or away from the center of the circle. One is a tension force of the string pulling up towards the center of the circle. So the net force is upward force this way. That force minus that. And that net force gives you the centripetal force, which is acting towards the center of the circle. When the object is at the top of the circular motion, the two forces are both adding down and therefore towards the center of the circle. So both of these added together give the centripetal force. So that's what's explained here. In this example, we have a girl swinging a bucket of water in a vertical circle. She swings it at the lowest speed possible. In that case, at the top of the circle, she's not pulling on a bucket. And so, at the top of the swing of the circle, you have to work out the centripetal force and the speed. So for part question A, notice at the lower speed, only the force of gravity is providing the centripetal force. Her arm is not providing any force at all. So the centripetal force is simply mg. Which is that, and put that into this formula, you can work out a speed as well. 